Do you want to unlock better loan rates, credit card, and financial opportunities in your life? The key is to boost your credit score and it's easier than you think. I'm going to break it down in five easy steps. So when I was a kid, my dad used to tell me that if your credit score is low, you're financially dead in the United States. Now, I didn't understand what he meant, but over the years, he finally was able to explain to me and show me what he meant through purchasing with additional cars or homes that he was able to buy. Now, my dad was an Italian immigrant. He came to this country from Italy. He kind of learned the entire system, which I give him a lot of credit for. And I was very fortunate to have him as a mentor. And he really didn't know anything. We didn't have YouTube back then. So generally, when people are growing up, they aren't taught about credit scores when they're young or much about how it works whatsoever. And I know it could be confusing, but it's essential to understand it because without credit, you're not getting anywhere. Credit score is important and ignoring your credit score can lead to a score that's in the 500s, 600s, which will cause you problems in the future. And for instance, you might be denied for a credit card that you want or rejected for a great apartment or stuck with the highest interest rate for a mortgage or a loan that will cost you tens of thousands of dollars over time. Now, I don't want that for you. I want you to understand that this is what I want to share with five simple steps that has helped me and the things that my dad has taught me over the last 30 or 40 years. Now, millions of others can get an excellent credit score by following it. So trust me, you want to stay tuned until the end to see all of them. Now, these steps are very easy to follow, and when you combine them together, they're going to create a roadmap that will eventually lead you to that high 800 score. Now, first and foremost, I want you to do step number one, and that's to prioritize on-time payments. It's critical for you to pay your bills on time because when you get hit with a late fee, it's one of the worst strikes against your credit. But something that most people don't realize is missing even one payment or something like a credit card or a loan could have a severe impact on it. Now, you might be thinking, what's the big deal? It's only one payment. But the truth is, your payment history makes up about 35% of your credit score. And that means every time you miss a payment, your score takes a hit. Now, let me break it down to you. When I met my wife 25 years ago, she had all these credit cards. She had Express, she had Gap, she had all of these cards. She didn't know how to manage her credit. So lucky for me, my dad taught me how to do it. And what was happening was now that we were together, I was kind of the financial person that led the way. So I would notice that she was getting strikes on her credit because she owed $50 to Express or $100 to Macy's. Now, she, we were both in college and I was working. She had just graduated and I had a full-time job. She moved up with me. And basically what happened was I had to get her to follow all of these credit cards and these bills and she had to really pay them off and started to build her credit up again. She had all different addresses when she was in Florida in her dorm and her mom used to pay her bills. She was never responsible for it. But eventually now she's up to 830 and we both have phenomenal credit. Now for each credit account that you have that requires a monthly payment, you have about 12 opportunities per year to make in one time payment. Now that means if you have one card, you have 12 chances to pay on time each year. Now if you have 10 credit cards, that's 120 chances a year. Over time, these on time payments would accumulate and show a good track record on your credit report. Now when it comes to payments, your payment due date typically falls on the same day each month. Now on that due date, you must make at least the minimum payment for the previous billing cycles and to avoid being considered late. Now, for example, if your next payment due is October 21st for the billing cycle of September 1st to September 30th, you must make at least the minimum payment by October 21st to be considered on time. But here's the thing, it's not enough just to make a minimum payment. If you only pay the minimum, you'll start accumulating interest on the remaining balance, which can add up quickly. And to avoid this, you wanna essentially pay off your credit card in full every month. Even myself, I wanna make sure 
that I pay my bills on time and by the due date so that I have a positive impact on the big important payment history factor of my credit score. But that's not all. I want to pay in full to avoid paying interest as well. That's the most important. Now, some people think that carrying a balance is good for your credit, but that's just a myth and it'll only end up costing you extra money and we're not here to spend money. So step one is to prioritize on-time payments. This is the most important factor of your score. So we never want to miss one and 100% payment history across all accounts is going to have the best effect on our score. Now let's talk about step two. This is where a lot of people really boost their credit closer and closer to 800 by just making a few simple changes to the way they use their credit cards. And that step is to keep a low credit utilization. See, overall credit utilization is characterized by taking your total credit card balances and dividing that by your total credit limits. This is the most important part of the amounts owed factor of your credit score, which accounts for about 30% of your score. So if we want to keep our credit score in good shape, we need to make sure we're not using too much of our available credit. Now this means keeping our balances low relative to our credit limits. This is something we can work on over time as we add more credit accounts and naturally built up a long history of on-time payments. Let's take this as an example. If I had three credit cards, one with a $50 balance, one with a $100 balance, and one with a $200 balance, each with a $1,000 credit limit, my total credit utilization would be 11.7%. But that's not the only thing that matters. The credit scoring system also looks at each individual card utilization. So in that example, the individual card utilization would be 5%, 10%, and 20%. Now the general rule of thumb is to keep your total credit utilization below 30%, but we want to aim higher. Our goal is to keep our credit utilization below 10%. Some people wonder if it's better to have a low single digit utilization or zero. Personally, I have 10 cards that are active. I only use a couple of them on a regular basis. The other six or seven carry a zero balance. So they have zero utilization reported each month. I don't bother using all of the cards month to month because I got a lot of business cards that I use mostly for daily expenses and write them off. So for the cards I do use, I keep the utilization about 10 10% or lower and if I make a large purchase that pushing my balance is too high. I pay down some of the balance before my statement closes or I use a business credit card also. That way my utilization snapshot is reported as lower and looks good to the credit nice. bureau. Credit utilization is typically reported once per month on or around your statement closing date. So if I have a thousand dollar limit and need to buy something for five hundred dollars I can prepay four hundred and ninety dollars before my statement closing date. That way the balance is only 10%. My utilization closes at 1% when it gets reported to the credit bureaus. Then I can pay off the remaining $10 balance by the payment due date to make an on-time payment. See, lenders want to see that you're responsible with credit they give you. If you're using too much of your credit limit, it could mean you're under financial stress and maybe borrowing more than you can pay back. That's why it's important to keep your credit utilization low and you can prepay your balance or get higher credit limits on new cards or by asking for credit limit increases on your existing accounts. But there's something else you need to know about credit scores. The length of your credit history is also important. I have 25 years or more credit history and it accounts for more than 50% of your score. The longer your credit history is, the better it looks. And that's why it's important to start building your credit as early as possible so your accounts can age and improve your credit score over time. Now you might be thinking, Leo, how can I improve my credit history? Well, it's not something you can do overnight. It takes time and all these people on YouTube saying you could do it in a day is ridiculous. And the most important thing is to get started as soon as possible. That means opening your first account and making sure you're paying your bills on time. When I opened my first account, it was a Citibank card, MasterCard. I got it in college. I had a thousand dollar limit. My dad co-signed for me 
and I was able to really start building my credit at about 19 years old. Now, what I wish I did when I was younger is start opening with an LLC, a business credit card, because then I would have built business credit. But that's another topic for another video. But what I know now, in retrospect, I would have really started building my credit a lot sooner and a lot quicker with all the hacks. YouTube is just a phenomenal resource, and everyone now has so much more ability to learn from YouTube and a lot of other people because of social media. Now, let's talk about managing new credit. When you apply for a new credit card like a, or a loan, the lender will usually run a hard inquiry, which is just them checking your credit report to see if you're responsible for credit. But each time they do that, your credit score will temporarily decrease by a small amount. That's why it's important to be careful with the new credit card and not apply for it too often. As time goes on, you make your payments on time and keep your credit utilization low, and the impact of a hard inquiry will fade. And after two years, each hard inquiry will fall off your report and no longer impact your score. Now, I opened so many cards in the last two years on the business side because I have many, many businesses and the business credit cards are phenomenal because I could use a lot of the points and it doesn't go on my personal credit. Right now, I'm only using a couple cards, like I said earlier in the video, and I have a certain strategy. If you'd like to watch a video, you can watch it later on um, at the end and check out my two card strategy that I use now. Now, I want to give you a tip when managing new credit. For instance, if you want to plan to apply for a mortgage and want to get the highest possible score, then it's wise to hold off on applying for new credit cards 6 to 12 months before buying a house. Even if you're going to buy a card, don't do it. If you have too many new accounts and it shows up on your report, it could affect your score and not give you enough time to recover, which means you might not qualify for the best interest rate on that mortgage. Now, on the other hand, if you're new to building credit, then for the first two years or so, a few hard inquiries spread over a six month period won't have significant impact on your score. It's essential to build a solid base for your credit and those hard inquiries will fall off quickly and those accounts will age for your credit score as it rises nicely. Now that brings me to the next one. Now I know you're starting to build your credit and you're aiming to reach a score of 800 and it's a great goal to have but there's something important you need to know and keep in mind. See this step in building your credit is all about having a diverse credit mix. This means that lenders want to see that you're responsible with managing different types of credit accounts, that credit cards, car loans, and mortgages. Now I've been working on this myself and this is the reason why I'm able to buy so many rental properties now and use it for my flipping business because at the end of the day, even if you're buying a no doc loan with a house that's an investment property, they're still checking to see if the investor has good credit. They are not going to give a loan to anyone who has bad credit. Now you need to do what works best for you and don't go out and get more credit just to boost your score. Instead, let this factor play out naturally in your life. When you're ready to get a mortgage, it'll be great for your credit mix as you make payments each month. Now, I want you to remember that having a good credit score mix is just a small part of building a healthy financial life and don't sacrifice your financial well-being for the sake of boosting your credit score. Now, if you can pay for things in cash, do it. Don't take on debt if you're not going to pay it off at the end of the month and you need to focus on really what works best for your situation. But I want to warn you, there are a lot of mistakes you can make when you're first starting out with credit cards. And remember, building good credit takes time and patience. But if you stick with it and make smart choices along the way, you'll get there eventually. And you'll be able to leverage debt the correct way to help you make more money in the future. See you in the next video.